In our interview, a former national coordinator of the National Poverty Eradication Program, Dr. Magnus Packel, speaks on the feasibility and monitoring of the payment system. Dr. Magnus Packel, you're welcome to the program. Thank you very much. Very happy to be here. Analyzing the federal government's you know, um, social investment program, let's talk about this um, payment of 5,000 naira stipend to Nigerians who fall into the category of what they say uh, the poorest of the poor. Hmm. What do you think about it? Well, you know, you know it's interesting because everybody talks about the 5,000 naira that is paid, but that, the emphasis really shouldn't be on the 5,000 naira that is paid but on what the program is. And the program, the way I understand it, is a conditional cash transfer program aimed at making sure that we have our kids in school, uh, that they do health checks, and that we provide a basic income guarantee to the poorest of the poor, as you said, so that they can ultimately be able to get engaged into the mainstream economy. So I'm hoping that that's what everybody understands, because otherwise, then you fall into the innuendos that we hear, the insinuation that is politics, that is something that the APC promised, you know, that they would give 5,000 naira to people. And I think that that's really not what it is. I'm not speaking for the APC, yeah. but I would like to believe strongly that it is about implementing a conditional cash transfer program in Nigeria, such as we have, say, in Brazil or in Mexico, uh, two of the really outstanding countries uh, in this endeavor, because that really works. You know, we, we actually started it when I was in government. Um, so, so I sort of know what, what is hoped to be realized by a program like this. This program, is it sustainable? Because a lot of people have criticized the fact that, you know, the slow pace at which it moved, especially when uh, last year we had a lot of promises how people will get this amount of money to yeah. aid them given the recession. Yeah. So is this really sustainable? The intention is good. How you get to 25 million uh, persons, I don't know, given the resources, the positive resources that we have. Uh, but they want to start with a million is what I understand. It is a very delicate program. Um, that we have to approach carefully. I'm hoping that they have thought through it well. When I look at it, it looks very similar to, to what I implemented. And of course, I had shared some of my things with, uh, at least informally, uh, with this administration. I, I passed it to them. Um, so I see some similarities. Maybe they looked at it, maybe they didn't, I don't know. Um, but, but it's a good program. I hope they can do it. Um, they should do it. We should encourage them to do it because it's, it's one sure way of helping to, uh, to eliminate poverty. In Brazil, after they introduced their program, Bolsa Familia, uh, maybe 10 years after that, they reduced the poverty rate by 20-something percent, like 27 percent. It's extraordinary. It didn't work quite as well in Mexico because of the way they defined their poverty rate. Mm. But I think it's something that we would need here because it addresses not only contemporary poverty, but also addresses intergenerational poverty. So if, we, so if we introduce it now and we keep our kids in school, then they ultimately should not be poor like their parents. And so we would have, we would have achieved two goals at the same time. So I, I, I think that we should be consistent with it. Uh, it is not an APC thing. Um, it should never be an APC thing. If, if in the next uh, the arrangement another party wins, I would hope that they continue with this program. And that's why I think it's important for the APC government to be sure that they carry everybody along. Um, and I know that they will. Uh, you, they've got to involve the states and local governments. Yeah. And, and, and whether they be APC states or PDP states, it, it doesn't matter. They have to involve them. It is good for the economy. It's another way of working it from the bottom up, mm -hmm. uh, making sure that the poorest of them are picked up, are engaged. But as I did in my program, when we did it, we graduated people. Our intention was to graduate people not only out of poverty, but also out of dependency. So you graduate them off welfare, because if you're not careful, 
We've seen this in some other countries like Brazil and Mexico, as I talked about. The people tend to stay on the program almost forever. And that's a disservice, it seems to me, to the people and to the economy. And it's a burden to the economy. In the program, the way that I designed it, you graduate people off the program. So after about a year or two, you know, suddenly within, a year, within two years, um, you're off the program. And you're able to even lend money to other people in the way we designed it. Would that be a need to augment the 5,000 Naira at the moment? Because when you look at the inflation rate, currently uh, it stands about 18.3% yeah. from the 17.9% we had late last year. Yeah. And uh, of course, inflation rate doesn't, doesn't spell good. Yeah. And when you give people 5,000 Naira, you know, given the, the current uh, situation, it might not be significantly, uh, it might not have that much value sure. as it, uh, of course, compared with then. Yeah. Would that be a need to augment that money right now? No, not, not really. Um, the um, the 5,000 Naira is, um, is indicative in a way, um, indicative of intentions. And, and I always tell people, 5,000 is better than 0,000. Um, a lot of these people, and I, because I ran a PEP for a long time, um, a lot of these people have never seen 200 Naira before, even holding in their hands. And one of the untoward things that happened when I was on the program, you had situations where you gave somebody money and they had never held a thousand Naira before, and they go give it to a chief or somebody. And then some things, some bad things happen. Um, so there were cases where the chief just took the money and gave them just a little uh, portion of it. So, and we had to find a way to correct that. So, so, so 5,000 is way more than 0,000 for these people that are extremely poor. And it's a, it's a gift. It's, it's not like for your job that you did. Um, it's, to say, it's to say that you, it's a human right um, expression, that we, we say that you are a person and you ought not to be in the predicament that you are in. And as a society, we don't want to see our people fall so far behind as to have zero uh, Naira in their pocket. So we give you the 5,000. I think you're right. The inflation situation is there. But, but, but this, is, this is good for somebody who really doesn't have anything. Yeah. It allows them to, but, but the important thing is, what do you use the 5,000 Naira for? What I have suggested is you make everything electronic. So first of all, so that we see the people that have got the monies. So, so people can support it, because the more transparent you are about it, the more it is supported. There are, may, there, there are many ways in which this can be supported by churches, mosques, by individuals, uh, because the government alone would be hard-pressed to see how they're able to uh, maintain it over time, uh, because it can be really uh, robust and, and complex. So, so, but you have these cards that people would use, beneficiaries would use to buy, they're supposed to buy milk, and meat, you know, to, for good nutrition for their kids, so they can grow and they won't be stunted. But how are you going to be sure that they do it? So what we tried to do also was to establish people who sell meat and milk. And then you give them, there's a system. So when you take the card and you buy it, it registers. We know that the person that we gave the money to okay. has bought the milk and the meat, and, the, and, the, and it was actually meat and milk that was bought. So that's important. The other thing is the health checks. Of course, the clinics would be sure to tick that this question came for the health checks. And then enrollment in school, attendance, that's, that's also validated by the principal, or headmaster as they would call it. So, so, the, so you have these things that you have to check because as I said from the beginning, the aim is to be sure that we end contemporary poverty and we also end intergenerational transfer of poverty. In addition, though, the, you don't want to keep these guys on the program forever. So what we try to do is we give them life skills. We give them training. We would ask some people, what do you want to do? Uh, what kind of trade would you want to get involved in? Now, the problem is there were some people that were incapacitated, that is, the parents. And they couldn't get into trade of any kind. So you have to find a proxy, some relative, or somebody nominated and monitored okay. that would run a business for them. So at the end of 12 months, we gave them a loan and they started a business. And so they no longer depended on the 5,000 naira a month. 
Okay, um, yeah. hold on with your thought. Yeah. We're still with the former national coordinator of the National Poverty Eradication Program. And of course, we're analyzing the federal government's social investment program. Join us again after the break. <laughs>